Hey everybody, happy Wax on Wednesdays. Today, doing continuing the texture month here in the month of March, and today I'm gonna to be using some really fun um, techniques here with just some copper. And you don't need that much copper, you don't need more than a foot. They usually sell it by the foot in the hardware store in all sorts of gauges. This is a pretty thick gauge, but I can still bend it with my hand. I've got two different um, ends going here that I can use on the encaustic surface. And here I'm just making sure that it is flat on the encaustic surface so I can make the best um, the best textures here. And I'm gonna heat this up, this copper wire up, so I'm taking a paper towel just to use sort of as a pot holder um, for my hands because metal does conduct heat. So the way I'm gonna heat this up is really simple. I'm just going to simply put the tip that I'm dipping into the encaustic surface on my heated palette. So in my case, I have a griddle. If you have a hot plate or whatever you're using to heat up your wax, then use that to heat up your copper. Just set it on there for a moment. It will heat up and it doesn't get it too hot. So if you heat it up with your, your torch or your heat gun, it's going to get really hot, too hot for your hands. And it's also going to melt and slice right through that wax and give just a little bit. It's going to melt too much at a time. So the putting it on your griddle or your hot plate is just the not right amount of heat to make a wonderful texture on your encaustic surface. And it cools down pretty quickly. So I'm putting it back on that heated palette pretty often. I can get a couple of little indentations there and you can see here that I can either slide it through all the way across this little board. This is a four by four cradle panel um, or I can just leave the indentation the length of the copper wire itself. So there's several ways with this that I can make different marks and as you saw, I made it two-sided so I can make longer marks, shorter marks. Here I'm turning it to the side. There's all sorts of different ways that you can create marks with just one little tool. And here I'm letting these marks on this piece, I'm gonna do two different pieces here in two different ways. And in this piece, I'm letting the marks dictate the composition of my piece. So this is a really fun way to approach encaustic. Uh, with mark making, beginning with mark making, starting out with mark making instead of starting out with actual paint. And um, here I'm letting the marks dictate how my composition is going to be on this particular piece. And I'm sort of just creating an abstract landscape with these little crosshatch marks. And I've decided here that this little mark at the top doesn't go along with my composition. So I'm just gonna fuse it out with just a really, really light fusing from my torch. And if you don't happen to have wire and you wanna try this technique out, well, we're gonna use a fork on the next piece. So here's the second piece, the four by four cradle board, and I am gonna do the same exact thing, heating this fork up on my heated palette. And this of course is gonna cause a little slightly different effect, but still a lot of fun. I'm covering a little bit more ground at a time because the fork has uh, four prongs. So you can do so much with this. You can create a border here. I'm just playing around with it and playing around to see what sort of marks it can make. And here you can create a cute little border. You can create um, some dots. You can dig back into it. You can create lines. There's so many things that you can play around with. And of course, if you don't like it, you can just fuse it right out. Um, here, I'm gonna just play around with a few more uh, marks and see what I come up with. And anything that I don't care for or that I don't, if I decide on one particular technique, which I do here at the end, I simply fuse the rest of it out. So there's never any mistakes in encaustic. It's one of the great uh, things about encaustic is if you don't like it, you can just fuse fuse it right out and start over again and here I'm ki kind of decided on this cross hatch pattern and I want to do it all over my piece and it's really kind of fun um, this sort of uh, cross hatch overlapped pattern and I think it'll be uh, really um, look really great when I have some oil stick in it so I'm gonna go ahead and fuse here the rest out and smooth it back out and put that cross hatch pattern all over the piece and here back to the first piece, it's now cooled and settled down. I don't do this when it's warm. I let it really cool down so I can really dig in there and push that oil stick 
into all the grooves without having it um, smush. I simply take a paper towel with some vegetable oil and it takes, it removes all of the extra oil paint and only leaves what's in the crevices. And then I go ahead and fuse that very, very lightly just to a glisten with my torch. And here's that second piece. And again, you can see how much oil stick I just put on there is very, very small amount, very, a little bit really goes a long ways. And I'm really using my gloved hand to push that oil stick around the piece and really push it inside those incised lines. And as always, if you want to join me on a full blog post for this video, then check on the link below for SherryRiffLogel.com. And also all of the Encosticology online courses are available at any time on SherryRiffLogel.com. So here on this one, I'm just using a plain paper towel and I want to show the difference of the effect here that this gives. It's gives, I want to call it almost like a grungy sort of look that I'm going to go ahead and seal in there with that torch. And it has a little bit of residue and you can see the difference here between the two. So I hope you really enjoyed this week's video and happy wax on Wednesdays.